So today I thought we'd take a look at the Beast battery pack again. So this battery pack is back from Torque Test Channel. I was thankful they did take it and test it. Unfortunately it did not work out great. For some reason the battery was shutting down and it didn't seem to be even load related at times. But this is an email that TTC sent to me and they did send some information in a, a short video clip of the testing. It was a good sign that the current did seem to be higher than the HD12 at least at some point in times but they couldn't test it long enough to be conclusive so that was the unfortunate thing but this is the video clip sent from TTC. The circular saw did not do well at all it just kept cutting off and I have trouble understanding why because I ran my brush circular saw with it testing it out before I sent it and of course I couldn't test it the way they were but I was cutting it into wood and pushing it hard enough to make the saw stall but never one time saw the battery stop like this so I was thinking it may have been a balance lead connection but maybe that one of the pins was not making the connection but it wasn't actually faulting out they were just starting back up so unsure what was going on here they did at least switch over to a angle grinder the fuel brushes angle grinder and it did perform just slightly better definitely wasn't what I hoped for but it did give us some numbers here to look at He kept working with it enough to actually give us a little bit of data. Even though it kept cutting off, it did start loading up and handling the load pretty well here. And I think this is the point where he mentioned in the email that he got it over 1,050 watts. Because I think right here, if you look at the screen total, we basically are over 1,050 watts here. So disappointing, but I sure appreciate them taking the time to do it and they sent it back and I want to look into it a little bit but I think I'm just going to scratch using the M18 board and since I do already have this aftermarket replacement kit I think I'm just going to use this similar board and just see how it does. It wasn't my first choice because I, I had it here before I sent the beast but I thought the M18 board it would hold it better under load but unfortunately it just kept cutting out whether that's how the HD12 does or I had an issue with the BMS, I'm really unsure. But this is the only option I have at this point, and I want to see if they'll retest it. So I do have to take the leads off of this M18 board. And I did actually silicone this, and I've had to pull this off, and it's going to be a bit of a mess. So I'm just going to cut the leads, desolder the power leads. And I will show some of this on camera and fast forward through some of it simply because I lost footage when I was doing the first one with the M18 HD12 board on the left here. My camera actually stopped recording on me and I didn't know it. So the Beast video was pretty short because of that. So I'm going to take this opportunity to show at least some of the soldering on this board just because some viewers may want to see it. You can also fast forward to some testing at the end of the video if you like. I do have to take this heat sink off because if I don't, it will be almost impossible to get this hot enough to desolder it. The size of this heat sink is very impressive to keep these MOSFETs cool. I'm going to turn on my smoke absorber. This negative one is actually going to take the longest. I will share some of this one but I'm going to fast forward it here some about two times speed so it doesn't take so long on video the same thing here for our positive there we go. The silicone was holding on to the wires a little bit, so the solder was liquefied and pulling it off. Just to reiterate, you always wear safety glasses when soldering, of course. Don't take a chance of ruining your eyes, guys. Going to put these power leads back on the aftermarket board. We see here this is our plus, and if you need to verify, you know, get the case and look at it. Plus is here, like so. Go ahead and get a puddle going here on our positive side. There 
There we go, we're pulling up. I'm going to use my screwdriver to hold it in place and cool it down at the same time. There we go, we're stuck now. I'm going to do the same thing to the negative side. After the negative side's done, I'm going to add some more flux here and just clean up and let this puddle up a little bit better. Flux always helps with the flow of solder. You're heating up this much, a lot of your rosin flux that's in your core of your solder gets used up pretty quickly. That and contaminants is why your solder joint can look dull sometimes. You'll notice when you add flux sometimes that your solder does puddle and flow a lot better. Just going to strip these balance leads back off. Add some heat shrink tubing. We're going to go white to cell group 1. We'll go green to cell group 2. That's just how I have my wires in order. Add some flux here. Just got my 60 watt iron here. Should be all I need. And there we go. We're going to use blue for the third cell group, C3, and then orange for cell group four. Add some flux here as well. And there we go. I think that's going to be just fine. I'm just going to cut the wires off close to flush here. Always protect your eyes. There we go. We'll slide our heat shrink up and we'll use our hot air to shrink it down. But before we do, I want to put some Kapton tape on this positive side heat shrink because it's split after heating it up again. Got to keep it in place. Use our hot air to shrink our tubing down. See how it fits. I think that's going to be just fine. I'm not going to silicone it this time. I'm going to put some Kapton tape on here. Just going to cut some strips here and just go across for protection. I'm going to put the silicone pad back on it as well, but this will be in between. Put a piece under the wires like so. And there we go. Yep, I think that's going to work out just fine. Going to put the two long and two short screws in it. We'll be right back. It's got the screws in it, and we can put in our foam, and then we can slide our lipo packs in. I won't spend a lot of time here. We showed this in the previous video on the Beast. There we go. But I will just show this again, even though I showed it in at least two other videos. You want to make sure we're balanced very, very well. We're matched very close in voltage before we connect anything up in parallel. Even on a temporary testing pack like this, a lot of current can flow very quickly if they're not almost identically matched. The LEDs are dim, but they are lighting up. One thing to test here with this aftermarket board, usually it won't let the tool run until you get the balance leads connected but very surprisingly it does at least run i don't know how long it would run like that but it will run with no balance leads connected which is odd but i'm going to definitely connect them up and give it a reference and monitoring of all the individual cells and at least one pack make sure it does still work that wasn't too bad of a job 
when I brought these balance leads out, I was not even thinking about the little belt clip that I leave on some of my tools. But you can change it to be either side, but it actually did barely go on there without pushing into the wire. Going to hook up my little individual cell voltmeter here, the monitor. And if you don't know, this is set to buzz if it gets below 2.7 volts as well. So kind of serves as a dual purpose. You can monitor one pack while the BMS monitors the other. A little bit of diffusing does help. Even this thick bag, it does diffuse it enough to show better on camera. Make sure it will charge. It is charging. We'll come back in an hour or so and just see how it's doing. Back now fully charged. No issues. Let's check our charge voltage. 20.5. And I do have this three horsepower DC motor from a treadmill. I'm going to try to use this as a quick test just to make sure that it will run under load without cutting out like the previous version did. I ordered a coupling, half inch to five eighths, but I did find this cheap aluminum one that I have. I'm just going to bore it out and at least put it through a preliminary test to make sure it's even worth going any further with it. This aluminum coupling isn't gonna hold up long on the threads like this. In speed one, almost 20 amps, and I'm just using a load tester here to load it down. And the DC motor is a generator, but on speed one, I really can't bog it down. Gonna go through and test some other batteries I have and see if it's any difference. This is the fake eight amp hour that I received from Amazon. It really tested capacity wise at six amp hour. And it is a pretty high quality fake, does just fine. No major difference. Now I'm gonna try the aftermarket 21700 kit that I put the Molasell 4200 milliamp hours in. Hopefully this will be a strong battery, very similar. And then finally I have a eight amp hour that I repaired. And it's probably stronger than the one with the model cell cells in it that's aftermarket, honestly. But they're all right there close together. Now as a quick test here, I'm just going to put the leads together and bypass the load tester altogether. The load tester was actually as low as I could get it, so, so about the same. So I don't really need the load tester. Just using it like a shunt or a dynamic brake across the motor, just keeping it shorted. The faster I turn it, the load has increased dramatically. And this one quit. I don't think it's the battery. Let me double check. I think the uh, drill itself has overheated. It is very, very warm. Let me let it cool off. Aluminum coupling is starting to slip. So a couple of days later, my actual steel coupling come in. This half inch shaft I made for the drill to five eighths for the motor. So I just got the motor flipped around here. It's a lot stronger coupling. Get where you can see it here. Let's zero it out. So I actually have it in high gear. Let's just see how high we can get the current and high gear taking it up slow. And I think 23.4, that's the highest I've seen yet. Yeah, 21.5 or so. As you can see here, I still just got it shorted out. So I'm just checking the current. And if I open this loop up, I can free spin with no load. And I'll also show the uh, voltage output later in case you're interested uh, what it generates when it's free spinning. Let's try it one more time. 22.6 or 22.7, pretty good. The, the drill might be starting to heat up. I'm gonna let it cool off a minute. And now we got the aftermarket kit with the Mala cell. 21700s in it, and let's do it the same way. 21.2. Right at 20, so yeah, I think as the drill's heating up, it might be tapering off a little bit. This is the fake eight amp hour. Yeah, not quite 19, it looked like. Yeah, so I think the drill itself is heating up. This is my repair pack that did well on the last test. 
yeah, right at 20. So I think that's all the drill is allowing at this time. I do feel like the drills controller is causing a lot of the limitation here. I think the batteries can probably all put out more. So this is not the perfect test, but I'm, that's why I'm excited about Torque Test Channel testing it out so they can test it out a lot better. I just want to simply test it out to make sure it don't cut out too easy with us. So yeah, it does show potential for a little bit stronger and it's not cutting out, so that's good. And real quick here, I'm going to set up a meter um, set to volts so you can just see what the two speeds generate on this treadmill motor in case you're interested in what kind of load we're dealing with here. And the voltage drop that's going through that shorted loop is internally generated and then shunted. So a little over 60 volts. So that's speed two and wide open. Slow speed by 16.7 volts. So I do hope this holds up for Torque Test Channel to do their second test and hopefully it does perform better. I really appreciate them offering to test it again. And I'm really hopeful that we'll get some results out of it. If Torque Test Channel does have success and show it in a video, I'll come back and have it posted here and at the end of the video and even in this video description. Again, if that does occur, I definitely want to thank them for testing it out for us. And I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching and God bless.